Once you beat all other 48 Providence trials, you unlock Judgment. A seated trial where you have no base health regen and must play through a gauntlet of every stage and finally a full fight with Providence. You can choose any character, though you're forced to use the default loadout and upon completion, you receive a special reward for each. Completing with all characters gives you a gold for the trial. I'm starting with general tips and strategies. There are time codes below for specific character guides, but some characters have a much easier time than others when it comes to this trial. My name's Moose World, let's get on with the video. For the first item, take either Guardian Heart or Hit List. In the character segments, I'll go into more detail about which items each survivor should take, but here's a quick visual for the starter items. The first mobs that might give you trouble are the Elite Lemurians on Stage 1 and the Elite Crabs on Stage 2. Any character with good knockback should try and push these off the stage before more enemies spawn to give yourself an easier time. Just be careful you don't fall off the stage yourself, as that's an instant loss. There are some items you should almost always take. Stopwatch, Rapid Mitosis, Bungus, Ifrit's Horn, Crit, the First Repulsion Armor, and the Concussion Grenade. Ifrit's Horn alone provides huge damage to both groups and single targets, and having a solid crit stat from Lens Makers will open up other options like Predatory Instincts and Harvester Scythe. Repulsion Armor and Concussion Grenade are both very useful for avoiding big damage. During the final phase of the boss fight, getting stuck in a corner can feel like certain death, but the rapid ticks will often trigger your repulsion armor, allowing you to get to a more playable position. Every character should get at least one feather, with many of them getting two. While one feather is always helpful, some need a second to cross this gap in the final stage. Stopwatch is your lifeline in judgment. It can be used offensively to dump a kit without worrying about kiting, but I usually save it for a defensive play, so I can bungus and restore health. Just know that there are a few attacks, mostly in the Providence fight, where you can get hit even during a time pause, like Sniper's Charge Shot. Use your stopwatch to take out bosses that spawn at the beginning of the stage, like Ifrit and Cremator. Note that not every character can make it to Ifrit before it puts the pillars up, so just wait until you can get into range. Also, I use a stopwatch to take out the Mending Temple guards early on the last enemy stage. They're dangerous, and the healing can be very annoying. To safely make it to the Bungus Multi-Shop, you need to save a single heal. The easiest stages to complete without taking damage are 1, 3, 4, and 5. Of course, beating a stage while only taking shield damage also works just fine. On stage 3, there's a spot at the top of the map where almost nothing can hit you. If you stay here and only leave when your stopwatch is up or you have shield, you can just about guarantee a no-hit. Also, on stage 4, if you kill the Ancient Wisp Blast, you don't have to kill the enemies it spawns on death. After stage 5, you're offered a Captain's Brooch. Pick it up and use it twice. You can afford two chests, and all you have to do is wait 100 seconds for the cooldown to reset. At worst, you miss out on another Guardian Heart, and at best, you get an item that trivializes your run. For instance, if you get a Bungus from the chest, then you can avoid taking it at the multi-shop and instead take a Tesla Coil or a Brilliant Behemoth. When you've gotten both, you can swap back to the stopwatch. Proceeding to the next stage will reset your equipment cooldown. Commando can be a bit tricky to start out with, but the item rewards are very potent on him. I recommend taking Hardlight Afterburner as a Stage 1 reward, Predatory Instincts, Harvester Scythe, Two Habu Feathers, and Hyper Threader. Also, consider taking Bleed over the Syringes. You already get a big attack speed boost from the Predatory and Glasses combo. Honestly, Huntress has a really easy time with this trial. Take Hitlist, Bleed, and then Wicked Ring at the end. I play this aggressively and try to kill things as they spawn so I'm not taking a lot of chip damage, which is the only thing that really threatens you. Hive Cluster in the boss fight will probably give you the most trouble, so just use your equipment defensively for those stages. Enforcer was the most difficult survivor for me, mostly because of the boss fight and the jellyfish that appear on Sunken Tomb. I recommend taking Scepter for the Stage 1 reward, as the fear on enemies is very useful. 
Then, take the spike trap to help with the jellyfish and save your stopwatch for when there are a lot on screen. Bandit has a couple tricky stages, but otherwise has a lot of good utility to keep you safe. Start Scepter or go from Hitlist into Scepter after stage 1 because his upgraded special is incredibly powerful and makes resetting cooldown on your utility much easier. You definitely want to take the early energy cell because it's almost a necessity for some of his tougher stages like 2 and 6. Taking syringes isn't super necessary and I would recommend taking crowbars or bleed over them almost every time. Finally, take Wicked Ring at the end to spam the invulnerability during the boss fight. Handy isn't as difficult as you might think, but still takes some work. Take Guardian Heart to start off and Alien Head as the stage 1 reward. A syringe or two will also help you to keep overclock up longer. Keep an eye out on your health and the amount of drones you have, as the ability to heal yourself is very strong. You still have to take Bungus from the shop though, because the combination of your short range and a lack of mobs makes the boss fight at the end pretty difficult. Engineer is one of the easiest clears with the right setup. Take Hitlist to start off, Scepter for the stage 1 reward, and every Timekeeper's secret and energy cell you can get your hands on. Your turrets will be absolute powerhouses with your items and should keep you safe as long as you have one down. Time will be pausing so frequently that I actually recommend keeping the captain's brooch for the rest of the run. You can quickly snowball with the extra items as getting any healing from the chest you spawn will let you take either behemoth or coil instead of the bungus. Finally, you get one of the easiest boss fights as Providence gets distracted from all your turrets. Miner can be a bit tricky. Give Hitlist a few attempts because it makes the rest of the run a lot easier, but if you're having too much trouble, it's still doable by taking Guardian Heart first. After that, important items are Alien Head, an Energy Cell, and a Backup Mag. I took Hyper Threader on my successful attempt, but it was a close one, so I would also recommend doing Wicked Ring for more uptime on your other abilities. The boss fight is pretty hard, so just take your time and remember to use your invulnerability to get out of a tight spot. With Sniper, you can get into a rhythm of shooting and reloading during jumps to maintain full move speed. Take Hitlist first and Hardlight Afterburner for the first reward. Like Huntress, you'll be doing enough damage to kill enemies as they spawn to avoid getting overwhelmed. Your backflip is an essential skill and you can start charging your secondary during the animation. Remember that you can jump while you're charging which will help you dodge certain attacks. Acrid can be a little tricky with no natural regen, so play this one carefully. Take Guardian Heart first, then Alien Head for the stage 1 reward. Prioritize move speed over attack speed and be patient. Backup mags and the toxin will help a lot with this trial, and I like to take Hyper Threader for the boss to speed it up a bit, but it's not essential, so if you have a preference for another item, take that. For Mercenary, start Guardian Heart. While Hardlight is tempting for the stage 1 reward, I absolutely recommend Alien Head. You can still take damage pretty easily trying to dash through enemies, so cross them up by attacking just after you jump, then use your secondary. Use your special if you can't dodge incoming attacks. Finally, take a backup mag, two hapu feathers, and the wicked ring for a relatively easy boss fight. For loader, start with guardian heart and take alien head for the stage 1 reward. It's important to cross up enemies like with the other melee survivors. Take a backup mag or two as the extra invulnerability helps a lot with the boss fight at the end, especially if you get stuck in a tight corner. And when you can, put your pylons on different levels to greatly expand the range. Just don't get too caught up with it as it's not your main form of damage. Chef's Trial is pretty simple. Start with Hitlist and take Scepter after stage 1. The upgraded special lets you use two boosted abilities in a row, which really ups your damage. The main order you want to use your abilities in is Oil, Special, Seer, then Dice. Use the boosted primary for both if you need to do burst single target damage. Make sure to take two Hopu Feathers and then Hyper Threader for the boss fight. Pilot's run is very comfortable. His base damage output is really high and rapid deployment keeps you safe from most enemies you'll encounter. You can take Hitless for the start and cheese all the enemies on the first few stages. For the stage 1 reward, grab Alien Head. Hardlight is tempting, but your secondary and special having a lower cooldown as well is very helpful, and once you have access to Wicked Ring for the boss fight, you can stay in the air for quite a while. Artificer is not as hard as you might think. 
Ice Wall is very helpful for grouping up enemies and opens you up to taking hit list stage 1, though it might be a tough clear. You want to use your Nano Bomb whenever you can, and your Fireballs whenever you need to move. Be careful charging your secondary with missile elites around, as you won't be moving fast enough to avoid them. Scepter and Alien Head are both good choices for the stage 1 reward, just take your time, grab the Toxin here, and then Hyper Threader before the boss fight to speed it up just a little bit. This might not be a surprise, but Drifter is super easy, so I don't really have any tips. Just take Scepter after stage 1 and then focus on spawning as many items as you can. You snowball quickly, but not immediately, so just keep an eye out on when you have healing items and when you don't, and it should be your easiest run throughout the trial. Robomando is honestly very difficult. His first three abilities are just really lackluster, but if you can manage to get the Captain's Brooch, you can actually farm infinite items with the special, though it's quite time consuming. If you really want to complete it with him, take Scepter to speed up the item spawning and be careful with the Bison on this stage. To close, I have one more tip, which is that judgment gets easier the more you do it. If you're on your first character and wondering how you're going to get through everyone, don't be discouraged. Since everything is seated, you'll quickly pick up on the best routes to take on each stage and the best way to play it. Because of this, I recommend starting out with the easier characters so that you really know what you're doing by the time you get to the trickier ones. Finally, I want to thank everyone for watching. I'm Moose World, and I'll see you next time.